Okay, today's lecture, we're going to start schematics and symbols. As, as you remember, I visited with you all, you know, the last couple days, we talked about how this is really the bulk of the rest of our class. Well, it is. What we're going to do today, today is we're, we're going to take baby steps. We're going to try to introduce the, the basic concepts of, of, of symbols that lead to building circuits so that you can help troubleshoot, identify what a circuit looks like, whether it's hydraulic, pneumatic, or electrical. And then we're going to look at, we're going to eventually move into, to when we move into hydraulics and pneumatics, we'll actually look at trying to diagnose certain things, to understand how they work by looking at something that's on the drawing. Remember, it doesn't look like what it really looks like in the real world. It's not going to look like this. It's going to look like something else. And so as we move forward in schematics, that's what we're going to do. So some of our learning objectives, identify common symbols and, and show how they look like on drawings and schematics. Now that drawing the schematics may be as basic as a hydraulic symbol or maybe a, plane, a whole set of plane drawings. When you get into 104, I think it is, you will see a whole set of plant drawings and have to di dissect what they look like. You know, it's going to look pretty easy on a set of plans, even with they may be blown up, you know, to, to cover a whole building or a whole area or complex. Hydraulic and pneumatic systems, we're pretty much going to stick with the ISO, International Standard uh, Organization for Standardization. Guys, know what ISO stands for, okay? There's, there's thousands of those. And here, for there, there's 970 symbols in the uh, ISO 1219.2 2006 library alone. You see a lot of things about ISO 2000, uh, 2011, 2009. Those are all different types of ISO standards. But in the 2006 library, there's over 970 of them. These identify manufacturing equipment and systems. So the section presents the most common symbols. Guys, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you building blocks to what to look for. So when you remember the other day, I, I, I drew up here three blocks. Well, when you see three blocks, you're going to you're gonna start to build your mind of what those are, what that is. It's going to really help you identify. You're not going to memorize all 970 of them. Wouldn't expect you to. But if you start seeing certain pieces of it, well, this thing has a, like a little springy on it. Well, that must tell me it has a spring return of some sort. This thing has this over here. You know, it has an open arrow. Well, it must be air. It must be pneumatic instead of a closed air for hydraulic. So those are things that you're gonna, we're going to teach you, little things on that. Again, guys, I, don't, I, don't, I recommend, if you want to, you'll see a lot of symbols. We'll go through them relatively quickly. Build you a, a cheat sheet. Build you a diagram. I, I highly recommend it. Um, I wish one of, one of my very first classes, a guy did he, it was great, I don't know if he copied him, pasted him, whatever, drew him out by hand, but he had a nice little eight and a half by 11 of them all listed, basic hydraulics, pneumatics, and, and, uh, and, and electrical, and was able to, a quick reference to go through and, and knock out a bunch of them. So when you're taking your exams and quizzes, except for your final exam, you're better to use your cheat sheet to, to do that. And it's a very, very helpful and very easy way. All right, the, the uh, ISO 1219 uh, from 2006 Symbol Library is an industry standard. Remember, guys, this is an industry standard. If you work for Bindler Steel versus another, maybe a more of a local steel company, they're going to change. The concept is going to look the same, but as for little nuances here and there, they're going to change. This ISO is just a standard, an industry standard. It doesn't necessarily mean exactly where you work standard. Uh, directional control, control valves, pressure control, flow control, pumps and motors, compressor cylinders, and then just basic symbols in general. All right, we're going to start with directional control valves. This is where we really start building a, a, of our taking our baby steps for, for symbols, for especially when it comes to for electro, pneumatic and, uh, and hydraulic. Is directional control valves. In real life, this is what it looks like, but on paper. It starts to look like things like this. And so what you have is you start with position blocks. These are three parts of the direction control valve, position blocks, flow pass, and then operators. And so these are associated with this. You will have different ones that we'll put together in a second. I just want you to see. When you see open arrows, it means air. Closed arrow means some sort of hydraulic. Operator symbols. How, how, how are you moving between the positions? In this case here, this is a two. This would be a two block, and it'll just have arrows in and out each direction, and it's manually moved. 
If I push it this way, fluid would come through this one and go out this one. If I push it this way, fluid would come in and go out that one. Just backwards. It's all it is. It's a manually controlled valve. And in this case here, maybe it looks like something like a, a lever. This would be a lever. We'll get to that. Position blocks. Okay, remember we're still in directional control valves. It's one of the hardest ones.